hard act to follow, but I think we might be able to do it because our next speaker is running for a very important office. He is someone who went to the Republican State Central Convention, I think that was, what, a week and a half ago, Jack? And he won the straw poll because the delegate said, we need a conservative person to give Mark Dayton his pink papers and send him to early retirement, folks. Without further ado, Jeff Johnson running for governor of the state of Minnesota. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, well, first of all, I don't know if you saw me in the back, but Jack was clearly trying to sell the ad to me <laughs> this magazine. And that's not new because our booth at the state fair was just, just down the street. We were essentially next door. And one night, my, my mom and dad came to the fair to work the booth with me, um, my, my elderly mom and dad. And uh, they, we walked past the booth, and he just grabs a hold of my mom and tries to tell her, sell her a t-shirt, right? And, you know, she's trying to be nice. And he said, I'm going to give you a deal. Instead of 20 bucks, it's 10 or whatever it was. And I said, no way. If she's got 10 bucks, she's giving it to my campaign, <laughs> not to the tea party. And I never heard the end of that. For the next month, every time he would see me, he'd tell me what a rotten son I was. And, oh, I don't care about my family. So I finally gave in. And I bought the t-shirt to give to my mom for Christmas. But he wouldn't give me the $10 deal anymore. I had to pay full price for it. So I learned a lesson. And I know I'm going to be buying an ad in the magazine. That's, that's a fairly safe bet. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> okay, that's good. So um, a couple of things. I'm going to tell you just a little bit about why I'm running for governor in a minute. But I, uh, I do just want to thank you for everything you do. Um, I uh, occasionally, frankly, Dave Thompson and I both get in trouble every once in a while because we go to Tea Party meetings because we actually think the Tea Party is going to be crucial for us to win next year, uh, whether it's the governor's race or the Senate race. And I don't know if any of you have heard of uh, ABM, Alliance for Better Minnesota. That's the, that's the liberal group that Mark Dayton's ex-wife funds, and all they do is attack Republicans, right? That's their whole job, and they do it in a, in a pretty nasty, personal way. And so when each of us jumped into the race, uh, they each had a video ready beforehand to go that was, it was, you know, it was pretty nasty, although mine, they didn't have much to work with. My video was Jeff, it was a two-minute video with with scary music in the background and clouds, uh, you know, going across the screen. And it was that Jeff Johnson supported Newt Gingrich for president, and Newt Gingrich cheated on his wife. Therefore, you shouldn't vote for Jeff Johnson. That's all they had. And so we kind of poked back, because I think we need to do more of that as Republicans, poke back a little bit. And so, so my response is, is that all you got? Really? Seriously? Can't you do better than that? And so they tried, and they sent out an email uh, from, a, from somebody named Emily, this is just a made up woman, I believe, talking about how Jeff Johnson pretends to be a nice guy, but he's really very extreme because he believes in traditional marriage, he uh, is pro life, and he once went to a tea party meeting. That's <laughs> what oh, no, no. <laughs> That's right. And, and my response was, you are wrong. I've been to more than one Tea Party meeting, and I'll go to a lot more because, again, you guys are going to be crucial for, for any of us to win next year. So thank you for what you do. Thank you for your interest in liberty and freedom. And it was so nice to see the school board candidates come up here because I'm a Hennepin County commissioner. So even though Hennepin County is huge, I'm a local government official. And uh, I've also been in the state house. And we know that our liberties are being eroded at the federal government. And we know what's happening at the state government. But you know where it's happening the worst? It's at local, it's in local government. Whether it's school boards, whether it's county commissions, whether it's city council or town boards, that is where they're stealing our liberties the fastest. And the reason it's happening there is because nobody pays attention. And we don't have candidates like these two all over the state. That's what we need, because people will start paying attention. I see it every day on the county board. I have complaints constantly about how much money we spend, but my bigger concern about the Hennepin County Board is that we spend every single meeting trying to figure out how to spend our constituents' money in ways that influence the choices they make, the way they live, the, uh, where they live, how big their lot is, how they travel, what they eat, what they drink, how they raise their kids. Uh, that's none of government's business. And where it's happening, the worst is at the local level. So thank you for supporting these two. And keep that up. Obviously, I want you to get involved in the governor's race. 
but keep your local candidates in mind and the ones who are already elected who are standing up because it's hard to do in local government and you got to have their back. So please do that and thank you for that. For those of you who don't know me, again, I'm Jeff Johnson. Uh, quick background, I grew up in Detroit Lakes. My wife is from Crookston. We went to Concordia College up in Moorhead, spent a few years in Chicago and D.C. And uh, we've been in Plymouth now on the other side of the metro for about 20 years, 18 to 20 years. Uh, we've got two boys, Thor is 15, Rolf is 12. I've spent the uh, bulk of my adult life in the private sector, both as an employee and as a self-employed business owner. Uh, also served six years in the Minnesota House of Representatives, and now for the last five years I've been on the Hennepin County Board as the, the often lone loud voice for some level of fiscal sanity in that wilderness. And I'm seeking the party endorsement for governor, and I'll abide by the endorsement because I happen to think it matters, and I think it's our best path to victory next year in, in the governor's race. Um, let me tell you why I'm running. I, I have, I've been watching Governor Dayton for two and a half, three years now. And uh, I'm a Norwegian Lutheran from northern Minnesota, so I don't get really worked up about a lot of things. I'm a pretty staid, calm guy. But it really got to me watching this last session in particular. It just, it made me mad on many levels. And chief among them, though, are our kids. Thor is going to start looking at colleges next year. Rolf won't be far behind. I don't know where they're going to end up. I don't know where they're going to start their careers. But I want them to make the same choice that my wife and I made. I want them to come back here someday. When, when I want them to raise my grandkids here. And I am so worried that if we don't change the direction we're headed dramatically and quickly, there's not going to be a great incentive for them to do that. Uh, we're gonna, this, this state is going to be a very different place in 10 or 15 years if we don't change the direction we're headed. And I watch Mark Dayton, and everything he does revolves around government. How do we make government bigger? How do we get more money for government? How do we make government more influential in people's lives? My focus would be very different as your governor. Quickly, the, the three areas that I would focus on, number one, the number one job of the next governor has to be our business climate, our jobs climate. We are, our young people are moving to North Dakota. That is nuts. I, I, when, when I was growing up in northwestern Minnesota, the big concern in North Dakota was when kids would graduate, they'd all come here. They're going the other way now. That's crazy. We are, essentially, we're rolling over for Wisconsin, North Dakota, and South Dakota. And that, that we have to reverse that. And that means significant tax reform, uh, lower taxes. We need to compete with our neighbors. It means fewer regulations. It means lawsuit reform. It means right to work and several other things. Uh, that will be job number one for me. We, 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 we can't let our neighboring states steal our entrepreneurs anymore because we're a better place to live, but we've made it so unfriendly for people to start a business here that they're choosing not to do it. Number two is the education achievement gap. I don't know if any of you follow that, but that's the discrepancy in graduation rates between white students and students of color. And in Minnesota, we have the biggest achievement gap in the country, and we have on and off for almost 30 years. And what have we been doing about that? We've been wringing our hands about it and throwing money at it, and we haven't changed a dang thing because we've never had a governor from either party who's really willing to say, this is a priority, and I'm going to take it on. Uh, and I will take it on, and it'll mean a rather public battle with the education establishment and with the teachers' union about parental control, about uh, parental empowerment, and about school choice. But I'm happy to have that on. And then finally, Number three is just an extension of my, my job on the Hennepin County Board, and that is to demand that government actually spend our money on programs that do something, that can prove that they actually produce results. Obviously, the first step is we should figure out what government should be doing in the first place. But once we make that decision, then every program we fund, I, I, I intend to begin a, what will probably be a four-year top-to-bottom audit of the programs that government funds in Minnesota. Uh, starting with our human service programs, our welfare programs, and the ones, and, and the programs that can actually prove they're doing what we claim we want them to do, move people off of welfare to self-sufficiency, for example, we should celebrate those programs. But the ones that don't, and there are a lot of them, because I see them every day on the county board, the ones that we're funding because they make us feel good, or because we're afraid to cut them because the Star Tribune will attack us, uh, we need to end those programs and demand that government focus taxpayer dollars on programs that can actually prove they produce the results we say we want. So those are the three areas I'll focus on. I don't easily get distracted by shiny flying objects uh, flying around St. Paul, and we will get that done.
And uh, I, again, I would just really appreciate your support. I'm seeking the party endorsement. I'll abide by it. And thank you guys for having me tonight. Well, that's awesome. We talked about supporting or endorsed candidates. Here's a candidate. Not all of them are doing it, right? Right. Yeah, so you've only got two candidates, I believe, that'll abide by the yeah, endorsement. Yeah, Dave, Dave Thompson and I are the only two who have said we'll abide by the endorsement. That, that's you, very commendable. Well. Okay, we have time for three questions. Possibly the next governor of Minnesota, much better than the current resident. What are your questions, Betty? Well, having been on welfare, I we're back in the rock ages. I would like to see uh, stipulations that if anyone's receiving any kind of government assistance, they're not allowed to smoke, they're not allowed to drink, buy a lottery ticket, or have their boyfriends living with them. They're living like kings. <laughs> and I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul right. to make ends meet. Well, and, and one thing we thank you, and I, I agree with that. And, well, one thing we do in government is we. We are, we're so concerned about what is happening in our, well, we're more concerned about what's happening in the culture, but we claim to everyone to be concerned about that, but then government actually gives incentives to do bad things through our welfare programs. So I think you're absolutely right. We got an update from the game real quick. 14-10 Vikings. 14-10 Vikings, who scored the touchdown? I didn't see it. He didn't see it. Patterson, Patterson scored it. All right, we got a question up front. Is there anything you can do about getting voter ID in? Uh, the question was voter ID. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think you keep pushing. I mean, I don't think it makes sense for us to put it in front of the voters again in the short term. Um, that, but uh, the, the way it should have been done in the first place is to go through the legislature and, and have the governor sign it. And that is not something that we should give up on as Republicans. I think you keep pushing it. That is a majority issue. Um, for whatever reason, it got very distorted last year, and uh, our own governor was on TV saying things that were just blatantly untrue about it. And I think what I think if we have a governor, and it would be nice if we had a Speaker of the House uh, next year, who or in 2015, who can start talking about that again and explaining to people how important it is to protect the vote. And then at some point, if we could get control of the Senate or at least have some seats change over there, we can get it through the legislature and have the governor sign it because that is. I mean, that's really important down the road for us to maintain uh, viability as a party in this state, I think. Good question. Uh, over there? Um, you were talking about taking on the teachers union. Uh, what, do you, what are your feelings on the governor's role in taking on the core? The question was about Common Core, and uh, I. I I don't support Common Core at all. I've actually done a lot of reading on Common Core as, as a parent of two boys that are in the public schools in Minnesota. Um, I got two problems with it. Number one is the federal government has absolutely no business in our uh, curriculum in Minnesota. And, and then number two, when you read the curriculum, it's absolutely frightening. I mean, some of it's fine, but there are, there are portions of it that are just outrageous, I mean, absolutely outrageous. And I think if we start explaining that to average parents, uh, they'll be shocked by it. So I, I believe that there should be standards, but I think they are standards that should be in curriculum that should be created by the state and local school districts, and certainly not by the federal government. And what we have to be willing to do, what a governor has to be willing to do, is say no to the federal government when they say, you need to do this and we'll give you a ton of money, because that's how we get it done. So, and that's hard. But we've got to be moving. We should have done that with no child left behind. We were actually ahead of schedule, so we could take one last question right over there. This isn't a question, but one of the things that I'm not sure a lot of people here know about is that this man was elected as the national RNC committee man uh, a couple years ago, maybe, and that's a position that you stepped down from to run for governor. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, that's right. So I think that I was at that state convention and I think that that attests to the amount of confidence that Republican activists in this state have toward Jeff Johnson that they would elect him to be RNC National Committee man. All right, well thank you very much Jeff Johnson. Yeah, you guys stick around for a while. Okay, let's stick around for a little while if uh, you want to go ask him a question.